So, so let's, let's, let's sort of dissect it a bit. Mm -hmm. Where does this, uh, and, and also, you know, the, you've all seen the Obama press conference, right, where he actually took this. This then became, <laughs> you know, yeah. part of a political conversation. Yeah. Um, what was the genesis of that sketch? What was the challenge of actually pulling it off? The, the genesis of that sketch was uh, related to the genesis of Get Out. It was uh, that we felt there was, since he came into office, there was a lack of substanceful response to racists mm -hmm. and, and crit uh, criticism of Obama that we felt like was racially charged, like the birther bullshit, for example. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, we, we knew that Obama was in this position where, you know, he couldn't quite, uh, you know, become the angry <laughs> black guy. <laughs> you know, that wouldn't end very well. <laughs> um, and we knew he had to sort of show this restraint, so we felt, and, and we felt like, man, this, the, every, everyone in America who sees what's going on needs Luther. Right now, and, and and he needs Luther, and uh, so it, it, that that's where it came from. You know, we having studied in Chicago, the great Del Close, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, wrote a book mm -hmm. called Truth and Comedy with mm -hmm. Sharna Halpern, and it really breaks down how it, it, it emphasizes and sort of drills into your head that comedy is truth, and truth is comedy, and. Uh, when you get when you get a laugh, it's because something rings true. There's a catharsis, cathartic moment um, in that, and so we we knew that that would have that effect. But what what are the mechanics? So one of you has that idea, or you go and you have a writers' room meeting every day, and you're bouncing ideas like, well, maybe we have a angry someone else. You know, what's where does it start, and how does it become that? Sketches come about many different ways. That this one was one of the first sketches we came up with. So that was huh. uh, Keegan and I. We rewrote the the pilot, um, just the two of us, and uh, that came from it, it came from a bit of strategy, right? I mean, we had mm -hmm. it was at this it was in this era where no one had an Obama impression or a take, yeah. and people were saying like he's he's. You know, unimpressionable. Uh, Is that you know? I don't know. You can <laughs> Yeah, sure. No one thought he could do it, and so we, you know, I had this impression that I kind of worked on and crafted, and we, we knew that that was good. And then we also, you know, just had this kind of eureka moment where it was, you know, I, you know, I think, you know, for me, it was this idea of. Let's have me in my my comfort zone. Let's put Keegan in his comfort zone, and uh, what if we let the audience hear what we know Obama's truth is? And that was the key to us: is that whatever is said, we all have to know that is what Obama thinks. He can't say it, but that makes sense. He would be thinking thinks that. or feels. Yeah, right. Well, either or. I mean, so. so when you're looking at that, are you thinking, okay, Obama is so controlled, but there is raging emotion underneath, and that's what this expresses? Or are you thinking deeply about Obama when you go into something like that? Yeah. Yeah, every line of every one of those we wrote, we would, you know, because sometimes you write a line and it's something you want to say, mm -hmm. but you realize that's not what's going on. If, if Obama was unleashed mm. to say speak his mind, he wouldn't go there, and you know obviously o Obama is not going to be calling anybody crackers. But yes, <laughs> but that to to what you're saying, the the feeling must be there on some level that he's out here. He's been he he's he's worked to become the first African American president to the highest office in the world. And there's a reality show host saying he's not from this country. Yeah. And uh, he's got to be thinking on some level, like, fuck this guy. <laughs> I was thinking, though, that um, you know, when I introduced you, I said you know, that, that um, these two artists, the artist of the sketches and the artist of the film, seem 
uh, on the surface to be different people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I don't actually think they are, because um, I think you must be probing very deeply into the psychology of what's going on. And I, I was always amazed with Obama, who was so controlled and, and classy. Can you imagine the unbelievable emotion that he's buried that's propelled you to this position? And what that sketch does is reveal. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. That's what you were thinking. You were thinking along those lines. And do you d discuss those consciously like that? We d I, d I don't think we discussed it in terms that, um, uh, that uh, spot on, mm. as in terms of, you know, we know he has passion to, to get to this point. We know it was more, I think, we discussed it on terms of, um, as, a, as a black man, mm. to be on this stage and to essentially have your race used against, against you, um, is that, that is something that is a, a buried down, often buried down um, anger and, and, and something that, you know, and what, you know, Get Out is about is there's, there's an element to it that we're dealing with our entire lives um, and getting used to. And uh, then there are ways where that, you know, anything that's buried, anything that you're swallowing needs to come out. And uh, so I think that's kind of more where it was coming from was this cultural idea. And, and we were thinking about, you know, people in, the, uh, in front of their TVs, you know, going, yes, that's what, yeah. that's the guy yeah. I, I kind of mm -hmm. want in there. It's mm -hmm. the guy who's representing, you know, my, my feelings about that mm -hmm. as well. Um, but you know, we've also we've done work uh, about Obama and you know having to straddle both worlds mm -hmm. as well. There's the code switching thing, you know. <laughs> where and by the way, we witnessed firsthand. You know, we because we got to meet him. Oh, you did. We did. You met him as well as uh, uh, Keegan. Yes, we. Yes. Yeah, so when we, did you meet him? About uh, gosh, a year and a half before the correspondence dinner where ah. Luther became Luther. Right. The actual Luther. Yeah. Um, and, and Obama did a pretty good impersonation of, of uh, Peel. <laughs> yeah, well, he says, he goes, no, I, I, I do a pretty good me, too. <laughs> uh, very funny guy. Where did um, you meet him? We met him. Uh, he had done a little tour around. He was at the Beverly Hilton, um, sort of decompressed. Like his, he was shaking hands with his motorcade, mm. you know, so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. And then we come up, and he's like, Cam Peel, tuck it in, let's go. You know, he sort of bro hugs, and we were just like, oh, shit. Wow. This yeah. is cool. We were like, you know, Secret Service, we good, we good, you know. Um, so, yeah, it was, but, you know, so we got to see this, this thing, and there is, like, you know, part of, you know, what, what you, you know, to your question about in, in, in impersonations, mm. um, you know, there, I think, there is part of that ability that is a that comes from a an internal identity crisis mm. i think at a, mm. at a young age mm. which i think is a, a common thing for you know racially ambiguous people mm -hmm. certainly you know keegan and i and i would imagine obama mm. as well um uh, that uh but also others and and like i said yeah. there's i think everybody has that uh, some identity crisis around a certain time, but um, you know I know for uh, Keegan and I it, it felt like there was a desire to create our identity or to take charge of our identity, which you know probably gave us some uh, push into acting and, and character work and, and impersonation as well.